Okay, so because I saved here, there was terminology, and I thought I was hoping it would still be here, but it's gone now, so... Hour of the Dog, I'll have to go to my encyclopedia. Uh, Hour of the Dog, five? No, f three. Come on, you. Hour of the Dog. <laughs> Approximately 8 p.m. Okay, good to know what time we're doing this. Hour of the Dog, 8 p.m. After we arrived at Akeda, I was sent off on several short errands nearby. I returned to hear Nagakura talking to Okita. Well, looks like we hit the jackpot on this one. Not sure if they're brave or stupid for meeting right next to a government building. I love the white! It looks so good. I knew they'd be here. After all, they've always met at Akeda before. Sure, but the night Furutaka gets arrested? That just seems sloppy to me. Aren't they afraid of looking suspicious? Well, obviously, they're somewhat less than normal. They are meeting at the, the Akeda Inn, aren't they? This is true. They are doing that. Nagakora and Okita's conversation was very lighthearted, which didn't quite suit the subject matter. <laughs> Perhaps the Choshu were trying to trick the Shinsengumi. I certainly wouldn't have known. Whatever the reason for their behavior, however, neither Nagakora nor Okita seemed worried. Heisuke noticed me as I approached and jogged over. Ah, good ol' Heisuke. So, how'd it go, Chizuru? Did you see anyone from Aizu or the Judiciary Commissioner? Uh, Aizu Domain, one of Japan's more influential clans. They were related by blood to the Takagawa clan and were put in charge of the office of the Kyoto Military Commissioner. And I gotta look up Judiciary Commissioner. Uh, six? Five. No, four. Five? Four? But... There is none. Hmm. Do I have to... Do I have to go to the next page before it shows up? Come on now. If it doesn't, then I guess it's probably a different word. Yeah, it's not there. Darn it. To be honest, I didn't really see anyone nearby. So, they still haven't made their move. We told them even before it started to get dark. Settle down, Heisuke. The larger man smacked Heisuke playfully on the shoulder with a bark of laughter. Besides, it won't do us any good if they show up. If this is gonna happen, we've gotta do it ourselves. Yeah, I guess. It's just... Don't you think running in on our own is a little reckless? Heisuke frowned, and Takada, who was on standby behind Heisuke, nodded in agreement. Oh, you're here too? I forgot how terrifyingly massive you are. Charging with this amount of men is reckless. We should wait for Iso Domain's reinforcements. If you say so, Takada. Alright, why don't we wait a little longer? And now the long wait begins. Slowly fade to black for a dramatic effect. I guess it's no longer the hour of the dog, though. We missed it. But no matter how long we waited, the officials never came. Hour of the boar. 10 p.m. We waited two hours. Come on now. I looked up at the sky. The moon inched itself farther across the sky since we'd arrived at the Akeda Inn. Damn it. It's getting pretty late. What do you want to do, Kondo? It'd be pretty lame if we just sat here all night. 
Yeah, condo, it's lame. The chief had been quiet all this time, but when Okita addressed him, he finally stood up to speak. We can't wait a moment longer. Soji, Nagakura, Toto, you lot follow me. Okita nodded quietly but firmly. Well, I will secure the front entrance so you guys have at it. What? Are you not going to come, Takeda? That's suspicious. It's all good. I mean, we don't want him in the dark and then mistakenly stabbing us, you know. Oh, actually, we may mistakenly stab him. <laughs> good old Soji. Okita, what are you suggesting? Exactly what it sounds like. No, no. If you want someone charging, we want someone reliable anyways. So with that said, take care of the outside, Takeda. Hmm. <laughs> so unreliable. Not trustworthy at all. I don't- this is all gonna go bad. Yukimura. Can you stay away from the Akeda Inn? Things are going to get dangerous. That place is full of rebel soldiers. We don't intend to allow them to escape, but... Better safe than sorry. Alright. And they all ran off into the night. He stood up, smiled curtly, and ran to the inn. Good luck, you all. All right, anime time. We are the Shinsengumi, retainers of the Lieutenant General of the Aizu Domain. By Imperial decree, you are all under arrest. The position held by the Lord of the Aizu Domain, Katamori Matsudaira, was appointed to it by the Shogun after earning the rank of Lieutenant General of the Left Guard. His declaration was met with a cacophony of yells and screams erupting from out of the inn. Hey, there's my boy. I'm giving the enemy a good loud warning that he's about to kick the tar out of them. That's Kondo for you. What's the Star Wars music right now? Eh, uh, seems like good form anyway. It's polite to let them know what they're up against. Someone's very excited. Oh, so your definition of good form is putting us at a disadvantage? Aisuke and Nagakura grinned at one another as they sauntered towards the end. Uh huh. We act with the authority of the government. Resist and you will be shown no mercy. Well, you heard the man, folks. Resistance is futile. Then the battle began in earnest. The yells of men and the clang of swords filled the air, rolling out through the doors and windows of the inn. My goodness. I heard feet pound upstairs, the screams of men dying, the wet thud of bodies dropping to the floor. Damn it! There's too many of them! We need backup! Is there anybody still out there? Um... Well, there was someone, but... All the men who'd come with the captains ran around the back and couldn't hear Nagakura. Takeda, on the other hand, was stationed outside to arrest anyone trying to flee the building. What should I do? The only person left to go help them was me. But even if I did, what could I do? That was when I heard Kondo. Soji, are you alright? Nagakora called out from somewhere else in the inn. Damn it, Heisuke! Don't die on me! Oh no! I had no desire to enter a slaughterhouse with men killing one another. Even if I did, I had no illusions about my skill with a blade. I was sure to be killed before I'd even drawn it. But Soji! But I could hardly stand around doing nothing. Yeah, go in, girl! Be a hero. Perhaps if I couldn't fight, I could rescue the wounded, find them, and carry them out of the inn. I made up my mind, steeled myself, and ran inside. Inside it was pitch black. The smell of blood hit me and the stomach like a fist filling the air. 
There were dark lumps on the floor everywhere. The bodies of fallen men. Where were Okita and Heisuke? It had sounded like a good idea at the time, but as I looked around that charnel house, I realized there was no way I could carry two men outside. Uh, we gotta look for our boy. I decided I had to look for Okita. I knew I'd cause trouble for him during the noon patrols, but he never called me out for it. It seemed only fair that I try to return the favor. Gah! Ah! Who's Shiro? A Ronin came out of nowhere, falling down the stairs and screaming. My Kodachi was in my hand before I'd even realized I'd drawn it. Good girl. Nice. Nicely done. Do I have to click now? No. Okay. Then, Kondo's sword slid through his heart. Oh, it was Kondo. Ah! I just watched a man die. You? What are the rest of our men doing? He did his best to act calmly, but I could tell my appearance had both surprised and worried him. I'm sorry, but can you see the Soji? He's upstairs with one of those damnable Ronin. I doubt he'll lose, but he could still be hurt. His opponent looks to be a difficult one. Yes, sir. I nodded quickly and ran off through the carnage. He's upstairs! I took them two at a time and landed hard on the top floor. It didn't take long to spot him. Please be okay. Please be okay. My boy. Please be okay. A lamp fell over. Oh no. Oh! You! I recognize that guy. He's dateable. Because <laughs> he's very pretty. Oh! Only a few feet from me, Okita was battling a Ronin. Oh, he's a Ronin. Interesting. I felt my stomach lurch. Whoa. Green versus blue. The cold ring of steel against steel tore through the air and their blades flashed. Lines of light in the darkness. That smile's terrifying. You know, you had me wondering how the Shinsengumi were doing. Is this the best you can do? The strange Ronin's eyes narrowed and his mouth curved into a smug smile. I'd seen Okita train with the soldiers, and his skill with a blade had been clear, but this Ronin... The way he dodged, parried, and slowly drove Okita back seemed almost effortless. Well, I don't care to waste any more time on you. I'm taking off. Thanks for the dance, chump. The blood and violence that was choking the end had no effect on him, it seemed. He was so peaceful, in fact, that he hardly looked like he belonged in the middle of all that carnage. Sorry, pal, but I can't do that. You're our enemy, so you've got to die. A smile split his face for half a second, and then he launched himself at the Ronin. Their swords slammed together. To my untrained eye, it looked as though the Ronin was a self-taught swordsman. His sword moved in large, crude arcs, while Okita responded with skill and finesse. In a contest of skill, Okita would have been the clear winner, but... This wasn't a contest of skill. He fought dirty, didn't he? As their blades sprang apart, it was always Okita who found himself pushed back. The Ronin sword was heavy, but fast. It was clear he was Okita's superior in raw power. The summer heat had turned the air thick and humid. I could barely breathe. Sweat poured down my spine and beaded on my face as quickly as I could wipe it off. I love that we're just watching this. As I could wipe it off. I... I mean, I'm here to help, right? So, let's actually do something. Nearby, a bowl sat, unattended, on the floor. If I could use that to distract the Ronin briefly, it could give Okita the opening he needed. How that you? With every ounce of strength I had, I hurled the bowl straight at the Ronin. Oh. He sliced it in two. 
But that was enough time for Okida to save the day. Almost without thinking, he turned his blade and smashed the bowl to the floor. The moment of distraction gave Okita his opening. All right! He leapt forward. Even caught off guard, the Ronin managed to get his blade up in time, but the blow sent him stumbling back a step or two, an angry look on his face. Take that, villain! As Okita lifted his sword towards his opponent, he whispered in a voice so only I could hear it. Yes? I love you. <laughs> uh, not quite, but... Good job, Chizuru. I knew now wasn't the time to bring it up, but I'm glad I'd been able to help. Instead of just watching it. Good on me. Pathetic. Ooh. The strange Ronin sword whipped through the air, little more than a silvery blur. Oh! Careful, man. <laughs> Okita accepted the blow with the sword. However, the opponent's blow from above was too powerful. Close eyes. Okita stumbled ever so slightly, but the man did not miss his opportunity. Oh no! Ah! The Ronin's foot slammed the center of Okita's chest. The source of his tremendous strength apparently extended to his legs as well as his sword arm. Well, damn. I heard a wet crunch as the kick connected, and Okita tumbled across the floor of the room. When he stopped, I saw him grip his chest and cough. I thought I was going to say cough blood, but he just coughed. Phew. Okita! I leapt across the room. Are you alright? His face was tight with pain. The most he could manage was labored gasps and wet, tearing coughs. Okita was in no condition to fight. As I struggled to move myself under his arm to lift him up, I glared at the strange Ronin, who's gonna let me just walk away with him, thankfully. <laughs> I don't suppose you mean to kill me as well. Let's have at it. I like watching children squirm. I watched the tip of his blade drift up to me. Welp. With a groan of pain, Okita lifted himself up and stumbled between me and the Ronin. Ah. Oh, he's here to save me! Soji! I look absolutely terrified. No, Okita! You can't! There was a good chance he had broken bones, and if he was coughing up blood, then his internal organs could be damaged as well. He could barely stand, let alone fight, and he was making no attempts at hiding it. But he stood firm. You're fighting me, right? Leave the kid alone. My hero. The Ronin sneered. <laughs> what a fool. Just what do you intend to do? You're good as dead. You can scarcely stand. You're looking pretty rough. Shut up! I've still got some fight left, you bastard! New flecks of blood appeared as he shouted. Stop that! You're still coughing up blood! And then he's like, eh, I'm good. The Ronin regarded us with cool, disinterested eyes for a few moments, then in one smooth motion, lifted his sword and slid it into his scabbard. What? The moment their meeting was interrupted, my business here was at an end. That was entertaining, Shinsengumi. However, your swordsmanship was a pathetic display. His aloofness was amplified by the satisfaction he drew with his every word. Adieu. He placed his foot out of the window, cackling to himself as he jumped through gracefully. <laughs> Did he just run? Did he just tuxedo mask us? No, he hadn't run. He was letting us go. Well, I'll take it. My poor boy. Damn it! I... I can still fight. Okita. His voice was weak. Why did you do that? Okita turned his head to look at me. 
You always said you'd kill me if I got in your way. So why had he protected me? He raised a shaky eyebrow. Huh. Yeah. Why did I do that? His words were already slurring. I'll figure that out later. But I really gotta kill that. Oh no. Okita! Stay with me! Okita! His eyes fluttered and his body folded as he collapsed to the floor. Man, that guy has got a heavy kick. Huh? I'd been so worried about Okita I hadn't noticed. The sounds of screaming men and clattering swords had disappeared. I is it over? I guess that guy had realized that it got silent. He's like, well, time for me to go. Soji, are you all right? The moment the words were out of my mouth, I heard the sound of labored footsteps on the stairs. Well, at least I have help carrying this poor boy out. Finally, the sun rose from the black sky. The raid itself had lasted only two hours. But for me, at least, it had felt far longer. There had been 20 Imperial Nationalists at the Akeda Inn. The Shinsengumi had killed seven Ronin and injured four more. I learned later that, with the help of the Aizu Domain and the Kyoto Judiciary Commissioner, they arrested 23 people. The owner of the Akeda Inn had also been arrested for trying to help the Choshu rebels escape. The Shinsengumi had won an incredible victory, fighting against superior numbers in enemy territory, but they paid dearly for it. Okita had taken a blow to the chest and lost consciousness. Heisuke had been cut on the forehead and the bleeding refused to stop. My goodness. Nagakura had injured his left hand. One of the Shinsengumi's soldiers lost his life at the inn's rear entrance, and two others were severely injured there as well. It didn't seem likely that they would survive. The Kyoto Military and Judiciary Commissioners also fought the Choshu Ronin. The person holding this office was tasked with keeping the peace in the city of Kyoto. It was occupied at one point but by Katamori Matsudaira of the Aizu Domain. With their successful resolution of the Battle of Ikeda Inn, the Shinsengumi had, at last, made a name for themselves. The incident where Shinsengumi troops raided the Ikeda Inn to halt a plot to kidnap the Emperor and burn the city of Kyoto. It looked as though the peace in Kyoto had been protected. Never could I have imagined what the ultimate result of their victory would be. Yeah, what is going to be the fallout from all of this exactly? July of 1864. We blinking again. <laughs> End of July 1864, to be exact. Weeks passed since the Battle of the Akeda Inn. In the meantime, the Shinsengumi grew stricter during their rounds to arrest the numerous outlaw Ronin that escaped from the Akeda Inn. Rumors surface of extremists who were plotting to exact revenge on the Shinsengumi. Additionally, there were also problems occurring with warriors spanning from other domains making things tense around the headquarters. Things were finally settling down. Thank goodness for that. As a result of my efforts during the battle, they grew more encouraging of my involvement. Huzzah! The Shinsengumi allowed me to sweep the area in front of the headquarters on my own. Nice. I get to sweep. 
One day, I was cleaning the courtyard with a broom when I heard gentle footsteps approaching me. Excuse me, but is this the Shinsengumi headquarters? Oh, yes! Oh! Another boy. Another boy we can love one day. The voice came from behind me, so I was caught off guard when answering. You're... Huh? A woman? Can he... can he tell? Whoever you are. Nameless person. Did he leave me? Ah, Hichikata. Thank you for joining us. Hichikata showed up suddenly as if he telepathically knew I was speaking to someone. <laughs> he is quite magical. Oh, Hichikata, this man is... new and beautiful. Before I could finish my sentence, the man ran towards Hichikata. Eva. Hachiro Eva. Oh, I knew it. Toshi. It's me, Hachiro. Long time no see. Y you're Wait, Hachiro? What the hell are you doing here? When Hichikata realized who it was, his eyes grew wide. <laughs> Are you surprised? I visited Kyoto with Shogunate orders. Orders given from the Shogunate. I never would have guessed. Forget about me. Man, so it really was you connected to the Shinsengumi. I couldn't believe it until I made sure for myself. Congratulations. You really did become a samurai. Aw, look at his face. Precious. Aw, oh, come on, don't mock me. I mean, we're treated no better than any Ronin. Yes, but your dream of becoming a samurai came true. Hey, I said don't mock me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, come now. The Shinsengumi are famous in Edo. You are so feared that even crying children go hush. I heard about your victory at the Aketa Inn. It would seem you lot are flourishing. Ah, uh, Toshi's blushing. <clears throat> well, we're working on it. Yeah, yeah. How very unlike himself. Hichikata seemed to be flustered, and his cheeks were rosy. Judging from their conversation, it appeared that this gentleman had come to visit Hichikata. The rhythm of their rapport seemed to suggest that they had been friends for quite some time. Once I verified their conversation had come to a halt, I mustered the courage to speak to Hichikata. Um, Hichikata, may I ask who this is? And does he know I'm a lady? Oh, yeah. You two haven't met, I take it. Well, unless you count a few seconds ago, I guess. Oh, I haven't introduced myself yet, huh? I'm Hachiro Iba. Oh man, so many things to look at. I'm a Hatamoto of the Shogunate Jikisan, and I'm an Okazume of the Obunchi. Okay. High-ranking vassals of the Tokugawa who serve the Shogun directly. And... Okazume and Oban... Oban... Obanshi, I think? Let's see... Uh, let's see if I can remember those... Oh... Somewhere in here... The Obanshi... An official group in the Shogunate who is treated and behaves as a military force. And the Okazume... An organization intent on protecting the Shogunate. It is comprised of talented swordsmen from Shogunate and lower-ranking vassals. Gotcha. Oh, I'm Chizuru Yukimura. Chizuru? Nice to meet you, officially. Uh, oh yes! Nice to meet you, too! As soon as Iba and I finished our introductions, Hichikata was inclined to get us indoors. Hey, we don't need to have this conversation out in the sun. Why don't you come inside? 
Alright. We can do that. I took tea to the two in the hall. Hijikata told me to remain there, so I decided to listen in. Oh, you eavesdropper, you. So, you claimed you came to Kyoto with Shogunate orders. Sure cl climbed that social ladder, huh? An Okazume? I listened intently, but subtly, since I was unfamiliar with the contents of their conversation. He is entrusted with protecting the Shogun and his guests and friends who surround him. Oh wow, I am honored to meet such a man. Oh please, I am nothing special. This was a job I acquired from connections with my father. B but what would bring a man of his stature here, Hijikata? This meant Iba was someone who worked directly with the Shogun. What an honor. It made no sense why he would interact with the Shinsengumi or why he had business with us. Oh, I see what you're thinking. You're thinking, why would he know a guy like me, huh? I did my best to nod without offending him. Ahem! <clears throat> well, he took it well. <laughs> you see, not only is he, is he a Hatamoto, but he's the heir of the Shingyoto Ryu, Iba Dojo, a top four dojo in Edo. One of the four oldest and most respected fencing schools in Edo, Hachiro Iba is the eldest son of the head of the family and institution. Alright. The Iba Dojo and my dojo socialize often, so this is how we came to know each other. Interesting. Yes, that's right. When I got word that I would be coming to Kyoto, I was excited because I know I would see Toshi. Whatever. Just keep in mind Kyoto isn't exactly a vacation destination. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. However, despite it being so dangerous, it seems even a woman can be with the Shinsengumi. Iba glanced at me when he asked this question before looking to Hijikata. Wow, you're so, um, so good at noticing things. Uh... I gasped and cupped my hands over my mouth, and Hijikata's eyes darted toward me sternly. It would seem Eva picked up on the fact that I was of the female persuasion, judging by their interaction. Oh, was no one supposed to know that? My bad. Oh, was that supposed to be a secret? I didn't want to confirm any answers, so I stared towards the mat underneath without speaking. Doop, 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 doop. Well, her reasons for being here are somewhat complicated, so we have her pose as a man for now. Only a portion of the men in the Shinsengumi know about her, so it would be preferred if you were to keep it under wraps in front of our men. Understood. I'll do whatever you ask of me, Toshi. Iba drew Hijikata in closer in a jovial manner, and Hijikata blushed at the notion. I love you two together. Hijikata is normally really uptight, so seeing him behave this way was startling. <laughs> I had a lingering suspicion that Hijikata was actually enjoying himself. Nah, can't be. Hijikata. All of the commotion must have alerted the captains because they popped up from nowhere. Oh, what the hell? Hachiro, is that you? I knew I heard your voice somewhere. It really was you, huh? Everybody loves Eva. Shinpachi, Harada. Everyone else is here too. Long time no see, boys. Man, you're in Kyoto too? Are you here to train or are you sightseeing? Don't be stupid. I'll bet you he's here to protect someone important or something, am I right? Well, maybe it's something like that. I can neither confirm nor deny. If you're in Kyoto, I assume you have a pretty good position. 
Eva nodded plainly in response. I see. You're in Kyoto too, huh? Well, be careful. Don't be stupid and die or something. Thank you for the warning. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, we should go drinking someday. I mean, we could go now if you want. Ah, uh, priorities. Each of the captains surrounded Eva and exchanged words. Most of all, Eva seemed lost in the amount of fun he had while conversing with everyone. I guess he really knew everyone back in Edo. Hijikata watched their interaction with warmth in his eyes and muttered. Just muttering in a corner to himself. Alright, let me read him. Him being Hachiro Iba, the eldest son of one of the oldest and most respected dojos in Japan. He is a master of the Shingyoto Ryu martial arts, and his prowess granted him prestige among warriors and officials. See, despite him being a Hatamoto, and also the heir of the Iba dojo, he chose to learn about each and every one of us, and he treats us with respect. It seems no one can escape his amiable nature. He seemed to be especially fond of Hijikata, though. But I couldn't dare say that. Well, I guess you can say we're friends. Whenever he visits, be sure to let him in. Understood. Ray, new boy. 